The following program is a production of the Fairfax Network. Wolf Cryer Boy is guilty? I don't know. The jury's gonna have a tough time deciding this case. Of course he didn't. That kid's nothing but a guitar playing flake. Not even that hotshot lawyer can get that kid off. It's all about politics. That mayor's just playing games to get votes. Innocent or guilty, nothing's going to bring back this poor sheep. Do you think he's guilty? Mm. We'll see. We're gonna come back. Good chance of this. Look, there's a jury. Everybody got their summons, right? You guys are gonna serve as a jury in the case of the residents of Sheepfold versus Joey Wolfcryer. This is a criminal case. Do you know what a criminal case is? That means that Joey has been accused of committing a crime against the village. Your responsibility is to carefully listen to each side of the case and reach a decision of guilty or innocent based on the facts. And who am I? I'm the bailiff, and it's my job to get this trial going. All rise. The circuit court of the village of Sheepfold is now in session with the Honorable Judge Justin Fair presiding. The case of the village of Sheepfold versus Joey Wolfcryer will now be heard. Be seated. This is the case of the village of Sheepfold versus Joey Wolfcryer. The village claims that Mr. Wolfcryer cried wolf when there was no wolf, which is a violation of village safety ordinance number one. There is also at issue village safety ordinance number two, which states that you must cry wolf when there is a wolf. Now before the trial begins, Mr. Wolfcryer's attorney asked to be heard on whether Ordinance Number 1 can be enforced under the U.S. Constitution. You may proceed, Counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. This ordinance, Village Ordinance Number 1, makes it a crime to cry wolf when there is no wolf. Now, crying means speaking, and the U.S. Constitution says that we may pass no laws which limit the right of free speech. My client has the right under the U.S. Constitution to say what he wants. Thank you. Do you wish to respond? Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, I do. All of our rights have limits, and freedom of speech is no exception. In a very important United States Supreme Court decision, a decision in the highest court of this country, the court ruled that the right of free speech is not absolute at all times and under all circumstances. There are certain classes of speech which are not protected. For example, you cannot yell fire in a crowded theater. Such speech is no benefit or value. The ordinance is a good law, and it does not limit the kind of speech that the Constitution is meant to protect. Thank you, Counsel. I have taken into consideration both the arguments of the village attorney and Mr. Wolfcryer's attorney and ruled that the ordinance can be enforced under the U.S. Constitution. There is no benefit to crying wolf when there is no wolf, and it does cause a breach of the peace when the townspeople run to the pasture to save the sheep. The ordinance limits speech only for the good of all. The trial will proceed. I will now hear opening statements. Okay, before we get to opening statements, there's been a lot of big words being used, like ordinance and constitutionality. Well, an ordinance is just another name for a law. And if a law is judged to be constitutional, it means that the law is fair and just and allowed under the Constitution. So in this case, Joey's lawyer is arguing that the law is not fair. But the judge has ruled that the law is constitutional. As jurors, you have to respect the judge's decision whether you agree with it or not. Now let's hear the opening statements. I will now hear opening statements. Your Honor, members of the jury, the evidence you will hear in this case will show beyond any doubt that last summer the defendant, Joey Wolfcryer, cried wolf at least three times when there was no wolf. We will show that each time this happened, the villagers all came running to fight the wolf and try to save the sheep. We will show that the defendant laughed at the villagers every time they came. Finally, 
The villagers became so confused and upset by the defendant's false alarms that no one knew what to do when the wolf really did come. The sheep were lost because that man, Joey Wolf Cryer, broke the law. Thank you. Does the defense have an opening statement? Thank you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is really a case about revenge. Nobody worried about any false cries of wolf or broken ordinances until after all the village sheep were lost. Now the mayor has angry voters on his hands and they want to get even. The evidence will show how hard Joey has worked and how he has tried to learn everything there is to know about the wolf. You will see that when Joey cried wolf the last time, the villagers ignored his call. In short, the evidence will show that the villagers lost their sheep because they ignored Joey's call and not because he cried wolf when there was no wolf. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why all the drama? Well, the lawyers are just trying to convince you, the jury, that each has the best case. No evidence has been presented yet. No witnesses have testified. This is just the beginning. Counsel for the village, you may call your first witness. I call Roscoe Lamb. Raise your right hand. You swear that the Mr. evidence Mayor. you're about Mr. to give is the truth, Mr. the Mayor. whole truth, Mr. and nothing but the truth under penalty of the law. Yes, I do. Please be seated. Please state your full name, your address, and your occupation. My name is Roscoe Woolsey Lamb. I live here in the village and have had for some time the great honor and privilege to serve as mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Are you acquainted with Joey Wolfcryer, the defendant? I certainly am. Why, I've known Joey since he was a lad. Ah, throughout the years, I've gotten to know everybody in the village. And I have to say, Mr. I've Mayor, never known... Mr. Mayor, if we may continue, please. Are oh, you sure. familiar with the events of last summer that bring us to this court today? Why, naturally. You see, as mayor of this wonderful village, which if I may say so, I am prouder than I can express, I make it my business to know what's going on. Mr. Mayor, was there a wolf alarm last July? Well, yes, there was. Tell us what happened, please. Well, I had just finished cutting the ribbon to open the new village playground when I heard this voice crying wolf, wolf, from the pasture over down by the mountain. What did you do then, Mr. Mayor? Well, I did what every upstanding citizen would do. I dropped what I was doing and ran to the pasture to protect the sheep. Were any other villagers there when you got to the pasture? No. As a matter of fact, I was the first person to get there. Was the wolf near when you got to the pasture? I have to say I saw no wolf at all. Did you look around for the wolf? I made a thorough inspection of the entire area. You see, it's my duty as mayor to gather all the facts. And within three days, I had my report published in the Village Times. What exactly did you find when you got to the pasture? Why, just that boy Joey Wolfcryer, right over there. Sitting on this rock, looking happy as can be. And he had this smirk on his face, as if he enjoyed watching me and all the other villagers rush up to the pasture for no apparent reason. So other villagers did run up to the pasture with you. Well, like I said, I was the first person to get there. Then Mr. Shearer, the village blacksmith. But I think eventually all the people in the village got there. Why, I've never known a finer group Mr. of Mayor, people. Mr. Mayor, did you say that Joey Wolfcryer was the one who cried wolf? Yes, I did. Are you absolutely sure of that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Joey's been the village shepherd ever since he graduated village school. That school was named after my grandmother, who was a teacher in the village for 40 years. But out of a matter of modesty... Oh, please, Mr. Mayor, just answer a few more questions and we're done. Okay. Now, were there any other alarms last summer? Yes, there was. Joey cried wolf once in early August and then again near the end of August. And what happened on those occasions? Why, just the same as before. Me and all the other villagers rushed up to the pasture for no apparent reason at all. And did you see the wolf? I have to say we saw no wolf at all. I have no further questions for this witness. Attorney for the defense. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Lamb, do you know a lot about wolves? Well, 
I'm afraid I don't understand your question. Do you know what one looks like, what it sounds like, how it moves? Do you know wolf tracks when you've seen them? Well, have Mr. Uh, Lamb, have you ever once seen a wolf in your life? Well, uh, I am a civic leader, and as a mayor, I am devoted to serving the people. You haven't ever seen one, now have you? Objection! Counsel is bullying this witness. Your Honor, the witness refuses to answer the questions. The witness will answer the question. Well, no. I've never seen a wolf. And now, Mr. Lamb, you would have been able to see a wolf the last time Joey cried for the alarm, wouldn't you? Well, Mr. Well, Lamb, uh, who brought this case against my client? I suppose I did. I thought it was my duty as mayor to make sure that the ordinance was enforced. And why did you wait until after the village sheep were lost? Well, there were a lot of complaints, and I, I, I thought I had to do something. No further questions. You may step down. Counsel, you may call your next witness. I call the village blacksmith. Raise your right hand. Do you swear that the evidence you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, under penalty of law? I do. Be seated. Please state your name. My name is Terry Shearer. I am the village blacksmith. And when it comes to wolves, I am the master of the hunt. Mr. Shearer, did you run to the pasture when you heard the wolf alarm last summer? Of course I did. I've been trying to get my hands on that wolf for a long time, but he's a tricky devil. How many times did you hear the alarm last summer? Must have been three. I ran up there every blasted time, but I never got so much as a glimpse of that wolf. Have you ever seen a wolf? Are you kidding? Why, if I had a nickel for every time I've killed a wolf, I wouldn't have to work as a blacksmith anymore, I can tell you that. Mr. Shearer, did you see any signs of a wolf in the pasture by the mountains? Up there, where that kid called in the false alarms? Objection, Your Honor. This witness is giving opinions and not facts. The jury should decide what happened. Objection sustained. Mr. Shearer, just answer the questions. Mr. Shearer, did you see signs of a wolf near the sheep in the pasture? The mayor wouldn't let me look. Said it was his job. Imagine that. The mayor couldn't tell a wolf from a jackrabbit. There could have been wolf tracks all over that area, and the mayor wouldn't have known. Probably no one else would have known either, after everyone was done milling around all over the area. Please just answer the questions I ask, Mr. Shearer. Now, was there anyone besides Joey Wolfcry around when you got to the pasture? The mayor was there, and Joey laughing his head off. It made me plenty mad, I can tell you. I have a business to run after all. I can't spend all my time playing games. No further questions. Does the defense wish to cross-examine? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Shearer, these cries of wolf made you pretty angry, didn't they? Angry? Of course I was angry. Who wants to spend all their time running up to the pasture for nothing? I didn't even get a shot at that wolf. Mr. Shear, tell us about the second time you heard the alarm and ran up to the pasture. It was the same as the first. No wolf, just that punk kid laughing his Mr. head off. Mr. Shear, please refer to my client as Mr. Wolf Crier. Now, did you see any wolf tracks? No, of course not. I had a hot fire in the shop that I had to take care of before I went up to the pasture. By the time I got up there, everyone had walked all over the place, just like the first time. Anyway, I told you, looking for tracks was the mayor's job. Were you angry? Now that's a fool's question. I was mad as a hornet. Still am. I'm pretty mad at that mayor, too. He bungled the whole business, in my opinion. And what about the third time? Didn't you think you were being tricked before you even ran up to the pasture? Objection. Counsel is putting words into the witness's mouth. Overruled. Leading questions can be asked in cross-examination to keep the testimony focused on specific facts. Didn't you just start yelling without even looking around? No, I mean, I was mad and, and, and there could have been a wolf, but there was nothing I could do. The mayor was in everyone's way. Weren't you so angry the fourth time that you didn't even go to the pasture? Fourth time? No, I didn't go. No one did. The mayor told us not to listen to him anymore. 
That would have been my chance, too. Wouldn't I like to get my hands on that wolf? Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. You may step down. Counsel, call your next witness. Your Honor, we rest. Attorney for the defense, call your first witness. Your Honor, the village has failed to prove its case against my client, Joey Wolfcryer. The defense moves for a directed verdict of acquittal. Wait a second. What's that defense attorney up to? And just what is a directed verdict of acquittal? Actually, I've worked in this courtroom for years, and defense attorneys do this all the time. She's simply asking the judge to stop the case now, because the village attorney hasn't presented enough evidence against Joey. But that's just the opinion of the defense. It's up to the judge to decide. Let's hear what the judge thinks about all this. Motion denied. Call your first witness. Very well, Your Honor. I call Miss Gladys Lupine. Raise your right hand. You swear that the evidence you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty of law. I do! Please be seated. Please state your name and occupation. Oh. My name is Gladys Lupine. I am the teacher at the village school. And how long have you been the teacher at the village school? Oh dear, let me see. It must be 20 years or so. And was Joey a student of yours? Oh yes. Was he a good student? He was always a very nice boy and a good student. <laughs> Now, do the students in your school learn about wolf safety? Oh, yes. We have a whole wolf curriculum, so the students will know what to do if the wolf is near. And did you teach those units in Joey's class? Yes, I did. I think Joey's class was the first to go through them. And do the students learn how to tell when the wolf is near? Oh, yes. There was money from the state for books and videotapes, and all sorts of things. We even had a life-size model of the wolf right in the classroom. And do the students learn when to cry wolf and when not to cry wolf? Oh, that's very important. We study the village ordinances every year. There are two, you know. One that says you can't cry wolf if there is no wolf, and another that says you must report a wolf if you think there is one near. I remember Joey was very helpful with that part of it in class. He helped me make sure that all the students knew those ordinances by heart. Thank you. No further questions. Questions, counsel? Yes, Your Honor, just a few. Ms. Lupine, are the students tested on wolves? They certainly are. Students just won't work as hard if they don't think there'll be a test. Are there tests over how to recognize the wolf and what to do when you see the wolf? Oh, yes. We do that even if we have to leave out some of the other things. There are only so many hours in a day. Sometimes we have to do regular schoolwork, you know. <laughs> no further questions. Redirect. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Lupine. Did Joey do extra credit work for the wolf units? Oh, yes. He brought in a record for the class to listen to called The Sound of the Hungry Wolf. Oh, it was really quite frightening. Joey always loved animals. He thought it just terrible that the wolf might attack the sheep. He'd never risk the sheep by false alarm. If you ask me, if Joey says he saw a wolf, Joey saw a wolf. Objection, Your Honor. This is the witness's opinion and inadmissible as testimony. Objection sustained. The jury will disregard Miss Lupine's remarks after the words, it was really quite frightening. Thank you very much, Your Honor. No further questions. You may step down. Counsel, you may call your next witness. I call Joey Wolfcryer. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear that the evidence you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty of the law? Oh, I do. Please be seated. Uh, Joey, take your glasses off. Uh, um, Joey, please state your full name and occupation. i Joseph P. Wolfcryer. I live in the village and I work as the village shepherd. And Joey, how long have you been the village shepherd? Oh, ever since I finished school, three years ago. 
And who was the village shepherd before you, Joey? Oh, we didn't have one. The mayor just told me it's a new special job and it was really important. I think he wanted me out of the village most of the time because people complained about my guitar playing. Joey, had you ever thought about being a shepherd before? Nah. In school, I always wanted to be a guitar player. But you can't do that in a hick town like Sheepfold. Did you get any training for the job, Joey? Just from the mayor. He asked me if I knew the ordinances, and I repeat them to him word for word. That's easy. Easy, Joey? You, you're here on trial for crying wolf when there was no wolf. Did you do it? No! So there was a wolf every time. I was scared to death every time. Now, Joey, some of the villagers say you were laughing when they came running up to the pasture. Were you? I don't know. Maybe. I, I was just so relieved to see him. Joey, do you remember the mayor looking around for wolf tracks? No, really. But the villagers, they were really harsh, man. By the time they left, I was crying. Joey, what made you think there was a wolf? Oh, well, I heard a wolf howling, and it sounded just like the wolf on my record. You know the one Mr. Dupont told you about? Joey, is this what you heard just before you cried wolf the first time? <laughs> That's it! That's what I heard! Order in the court. Your Honor, I'd like to enter into evidence this official recording of a wolf howling. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Very well. The official recording of a wolf howling will be entered into evidence as Joey's Exhibit A. Joey, do you still think there was a wolf? Yes, I do. Joey, what about the second time? Did you cry wolf the second time? I sure did. It was just before dark, and it was really creepy. I saw something moving in the shadows pretty close to the sheep, and I didn't want to take any chances, so I called for help. I read a book that said if you waited until you saw the wolf right in front of you, then it was too late. And anyway, it takes people time to get up to the pasture. And did you laugh the second time too, Joey? I don't know. I mean, I was really embarrassed. The villagers made all kinds of noise getting up to the pasture. And by the time they got there, whatever it was I saw wasn't there anymore. I was afraid the villagers would start not believing me. What about the third time, Joey? Oh, well, the third time, it was really dark. I had this little campfire I was sitting by when suddenly I heard footsteps behind me. When I turned around, and I could see with these great big teeth coming right at me. Something jumped at me and I started to scream. And the next thing I knew, all the villagers were there. Was it late, Joey? I don't know. I, I just know it was dark. Joey, were you asleep? Could it have all been just a dream? I don't think so. It all seemed so real. I think it was a wolf. Now, Joey, did anybody complain about any broken ordinances or false cries of wolf the first three times you called? No. Nobody said anything about it until after all the sheep were lost. Joey, did you cry wolf a fourth time? <laughs> yeah, I did. Last September, the wolf came down from the mountains and straight to the flock. I called and I called and I called, but nobody came. I tried to frighten the wolf off with a big stick, but I couldn't make him scared of me because I was too scared of him. Nobody would come to help me, not a single one of them. Now all the sheep are gone, and I only wanted to save the sheep. Joey, is this what you saw that day? <laughs> That's it! That's what I saw! There will be order in this courtroom. Your Honor, I'd like to enter into evidence this official police sketch of the wolf as seen by the villagers of Muttonville from the other side of the pasture. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Very well. The police sketch of the wolf shall be entered into evidence as Exhibit B. No further questions, Your Honor. Any cross-examination? Joey, do you expect us to believe that there was a wolf every time? That's right. I think there was a wolf every single time. Joey, did you laugh at the villagers the third time? I don't know. I don't remember. Or won't admit it. No further questions. Redirect. The defense rests. Mr. Wolfcryer, you may step down. I will now hear closing arguments. Man, that was a lot of testimony. What's left to argue? Closing arguments allow each side to talk to the jury and sum up their case. Each side wants to make you believe that they're right. Now get ready for even more drama. But remember, your job is to reach a verdict based on the facts. Counsel for the Village may now proceed with closing arguments. Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, 
You have heard how three times the villagers heard the defendant, Joey Wolf Cryer, cry wolf. How three times they ran to the pasture by the mountains and how each and every time they found no wolf. Just Joey Wolf Cryer sitting there laughing. He was laughing because he thought it was funny to make them run all that way. But it wasn't funny, not funny at all. And what is the defense? Joey thought there was a wolf. Maybe the villagers scared the wolf away on their way to the pasture. Maybe Joey was asleep. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you believe the defendant, he may walk out of this courtroom laughing at all of us just the way he laughed at the villagers. There can be only one verdict in this case. The defendant is guilty. Thank you. Attorney for the defense, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, common sense should tell you that Joey is not guilty. Joey believed there was a wolf each and every time. Now, he may have been wrong, but don't forget the wolf did come in the end. And don't forget the villagers lost their sheep when they ignored Joey's call. And don't forget this case didn't begin until after all the sheep were lost. Ladies and gentlemen, Joey was caught between two laws, one which states that you must cry wolf when there is a wolf, and one which says you may not cry wolf when there isn't a wolf. Joey decided not to take any chances. When he thought the wolf was near, he cried for help. The villagers didn't listen to him then, and they don't want you to listen to him today. Believe Joey, ladies and gentlemen, and find him not guilty. Thank you. Now that you have heard all the evidence, it is your job to decide what the facts are. Think carefully about the testimony of each witness. Think about what they said and how they said it. Then decide who you believe. The villagers charged Mr. Wolfcryer with breaking a law. In order to find him guilty, you must find that he intended to cry wolf when there was no wolf. That he meant to do it. If you find that he was just careless or mistaken about the wolf, you cannot find him guilty. Remember, the defendant starts a trial with an innocent man with no evidence against him. In order to find him guilty, you must find that the charges against him are almost certainly true. You must all agree on the same verdict. It must be a unanimous decision. Now it's up to you, the jury. Is Joey Wolfcryer guilty or not guilty? You decide.